Hello my beautiful friends, welcome back to Dainty Gifts School of Decor and Decoupage. I hope that you're all having a wonderful day and welcome back to another episode of Craft With Me. In today's Craft With Me we're going to decorate these two lovely books. So these are my two kind of teenage favourites. I've kept them around for like 10 years, you know, in hopes that maybe one day I'll reread them but to be perfectly honest I doubt that that day will ever come and if that day ever comes um, these are like two books out of like the end of series I don't have the whole um, series around so I figured I may as well make them into something that's gonna look nice in my photo setup. I know usually in these um, Craft With Me episodes I usually talk to you at the beginning of the process so you get to see what it looks like beforehand but trust me you will get to see that in the next clip. But when I started making these I was still feeling a little bit under the weather. My nose was red like a tomato so I'm um, you know nobody needs to see that but yeah um, I hope that this is going to be enjoyable for you to watch we looked at some interesting techniques and did something a little bit different I don't usually do this kind of blue and pink you know very shabby chic vintagey shades so that was a nice change for me I really enjoyed those and also yeah really quickly I just wanted to show these because in one of the pictures that I posted in the community tab um, about a week ago or so uh, one of the lovely subscribers, friend of the channel, asked if I could show them a little bit closer. So yeah, here they are. Um, these are the books that you could see in the background of the picture. So there is a video tutorial for this one. There is also a video tutorial for this one, this book. Um, and then this lovely notebook is one that I made in a decoupage workshop. Um, it was like an online decoupage workshop, um, a Russian one. So um, any of my Russian speaking audience, um, it's a channel called Serebrny Lebit or Silver Swan in English and um, they are amazing and I learned so much from them. They do like almost daily live videos where they just kind of show how they work but of course you know um, if you don't speak Russian then it might be a little bit difficult to kind of understand what's going on. But anyways that's beside the point. One of the lovely decoupage masters um, in the group she always does these online workshops for decoupage and this was one of the ones that I took and we made lovely little notebooks and this was kind of one of the things that set me off on my own personal decoupage journey and decorating journey and um, yeah and this is a very special keepsake we also did the inside of the journal as well I tried writing in it but to be perfectly honest I don't write in journals, <laughs> I'm not that kind of person. I always buy them and look at them and I have all the best intentions but I always forget about them and then even if I write something inside, for me it's like out of sight, out of mind. If I need to do a to-do list or write something, it needs to sit in front of my face, I need to be able to see it. As soon as I close the notebook, that's it, it's, it's gone. Um, I may have never even bothered. But yeah, anyways, without me rambling on for too much longer, grab a cup of tea or coffee and let's get started. Okay, let's redo some books. As you can see, we have a slightly different angle today. I'm trying out a new kind of setup just so that I have a little bit more space to work on so you can see better. Um, none of these setups are going to work as well as I would like them to be because I'm using this camera and I can't mount it to my overhead shot so I do apologize about these angles but this is what we're working with. I hope that the light in this video turns out to be a bit better than what I can see it's on the camera right now. Um, I don't know why I'm trying to play around with the settings but truth be told I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know anything about cameras so <laughs> I hope that you can see everything well. Either way as you would have seen from the intro today we're going to um, upcycle some books. These are my last two hard book covers that I don't mind upcycling that I have at home. I really should take myself to the charity shop when I'm feeling um, when I'm back on my feet and get myself some more of these um, hardback cover books. These are actually my teenage favorite. Um, it's like the Russian version of Harry Potter. The first few books are very similar to Harry Potter, but like the story afterwards is, um, you know, 
really different. Either way, that's beside the point. So today I'm gonna do two of these books. They're gonna be both in kind of similar styles, but I wanna put two different pictures on them, maybe do slightly different designs on them. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to prep them. And to prep them, all I'm gonna do is take my Difficult Surface Primer. This is by the brand Colors, which is our local B&Q um, hardware shop's brand. And I'm going to apply it onto the book. If you can use acrylic paint, you can use chalk paint for this. If you have chalk paint, chalk paint is great for this kind of stuff. Um, gesso, anything like that is going to do absolutely fine. But today I'm going to use my difficult surface primer. I'm going to use these books as props. It's not an actual book that I'm going to be using much, so um, I don't need it to be like super sturdy or anything. Right, so I've done one side. Going to move on to the next book. Basically just cover both of these books with primer so that then we can move on with the decorating process. Now I'm going to get my hair dryer out and get these sides dry so that I can do the other side and the insides properly. But as always, if you can, it's best to leave everything to dry. Especially if you're using a primer like I am, you should always follow the instructions on the tin. Um, but I don't care about the rules, so I'm going to get it dry. So I've applied the primer, and I've done two coats on the front and the spine, and I've just done one coat on the back here. This is what happens when you end up drying your primer with a hairdryer, instead of letting it dry naturally and sit it for 24 hours. You know, slightest little touch and it starts peeling away. Um, in my case, it's okay because these are just props, they are old books already and, uh, you know, the main reason for me doing this is to show you on a video. But if you do do something like this and you want it to be long-lasting, then make sure that you dry your things properly. Okay, so the next step of decorating that I'm going to do is I'm going to um, apply some raised stencils onto the spines because I want to decorate the spines and I'm also going to apply this stencil over the top of the front of this book. Um, the reason why I'm doing it is because on this book, this is a um, an earlier edition of this series, so these letters at the top they're dented quite a bit so you can still feel them and if I start painting it and then dry brushing it or doing anything they're going to show through so I want to mask them. I'm going to do race stenciling on both of these and I'm just going to use this gel medium. This is daily art gel medium. If you don't have a gel medium <clears throat> you can use structure paste, you can use filler paste you know for filling cracks in walls. You can use anything like that that you might have on hand. I don't have any um, filler paste left so I'm using gel medium and so I'm just kind of holding my stencil in place here. Let me see if it's Quite straight and I'm going to start from the top and I just apply my gel medium. Of course as always we're making shabby chic vintage looking stuff so um, I'm not too bothered if things don't end up going even or anything like that you know as always we don't do new and shiny here on this channel. Somebody left a comment on my Facebook page I can't remember who I'm so sorry um, but they left a comment, if I ever wonder how much effort we put into making new things look aged and old. <laughs> and believe me, I think about it every time. Like my partner, he like does not understand vintage and shabby chic. He's all about modern life and, um, you know, all like, he likes rustic, but he doesn't like shabby chic or, you know, this kind of vintage. So, um, definitely not, um... The cleanest job I've ever done. Let me grab a baby wipe. But again, you can't expect much more from something like this. You know, this book is at least um, 10 years old now and it's been through a lot. Oh, I actually only just noticed that I took off some primer along with it. Well, there you go. That's what happens. I may as well not have bothered with the primer. Um, once again, there you go, you see what happens. But, again, shabby chic, it's fine. I'm just going to clean off the stencil before I apply onto the other book. 
We'll see how the other book takes it. Seriously though, if you want your primer to work, make sure that you let it actually set properly because this is what happens. When I say that it's always best to let things dry properly and naturally, um, this is why, because these kind of things will happen. But again, my job is to kind of teach you or show you, um, allow you learn from my mistakes so that when you actually have to do like an order for somebody, you know exactly how to execute it so that the person on the receiving end actually receives a decent product. One of these days I'm going to have to do a craft with me where I actually do things properly. <laughs> right, so let's do this other book. This one peeled off some some of the primer too, of course. Okay, so now I've got my first book again, and I'm gonna do this stencil here. So I'm not gonna place it, you know, straight like this. I'm gonna place it um, diagonally so that we cover a bit more surface. And then again, same thing. Use this gel medium. Off. This one turned out a little bit better again because the surface is straight, so I'm not having to like press it down as much. There's not as much um, seep through of gel medium underneath the stencil, so you know, obviously, it's going to look much better straight away. Okay, so now I'm going to go clean off my stencils, and then once again, I'm going to use the hairdryer to dry the gel medium so that we can move on with painting and decoupaging. Okay friends, I am back. So this actually took a little bit longer, a few days longer than expected. Um, I tried to dry the stencils with a hairdryer, but it was just taking a really, really long time. It didn't want to set. So I decided to leave it overnight and then life happened. So now it's, um, I don't know, five days later or something. And I am ready to get these books finished finally. So before we move on to the next step, these are the decoupage pictures that I've decided to use for these books. So this is a printout from Digital Collage Club. If you guys haven't heard of it before, they basically have a big library full of different uh, prints like this and bigger, smaller, a lot of um, things for scrapbooking or junk journaling, things like that. But since I don't do kind of journaling or make any of that kind of stuff, I use the images for decoupage. These are all royalty free, so once you have the membership you can print these out however many times. And also you get a craft license with these. It's like a small business license that you get with these, so you can um, make, I believe, up to like 400 pieces, you know, using the same image and sell them. If you sell more than that, then you need a business license or something like that. But either way, if any of you guys are interested in checking them out, there is a little promo link in the description of this video with uh, discount codes for their yearly or lifetime membership. So if you do want to then sign up, make sure to use the code to save yourself some money off of the membership. So the images that I want to use are these two with bees on them, so the blue and the pink one. And I think that they would go really nicely together, pink and blue. So with these pictures in mind, I'm now going to mix up some paint for these books. First I'm going to mix up the blue, so I'm going to use this acrylic paint as a base. This is a Daily Art acrylic paint. So I'm going to put a nice blob onto my plate, like so. And then I'm going to use these two blue paints from Little Birdie Crafts to mix up a shade of blue that kind of looks similar to this. So what I have here is Sailing Sky and a Lagoon Breeze. Might have to use some other colours after, who knows. Not an exact science at all, I literally just put the colours together and then see where we stand. Now let's mix them up. The difficult thing about mixing up paint is that whenever you're mixing paint, it's obviously very wet, and then as it dries, it usually changes colour a little bit, so it either becomes lighter or darker. For me personally, that's the most challenging thing that I find. 
is when mixing up paints. So even if I'm mixing it up right now, it looks like a perfect match. It probably won't be when it's dry. This is a nice shade. I think I'm going to add a little bit of brown. So this is Daily Art Burnt Umber. Just to make it a little bit more antique. That was way more than I intended. <clears throat> I do use this brown colour a lot. So there's not a lot left. Great, so now we've got brown. <laughs> Instead, so I'm just going to add some of this teal back into the mix. I always end up with way more paint than what I need for the project. So if I have a lot of paint left over when I'm finished, I usually try and do a project after that's in the kind of like similar shades that I just used so I can use up the paint. <laughs> Let's get started. So straight away I'm just going to take a brush and paint the whole thing in this shade of bluey grey. I might have to apply a couple of coats. I hope that I have also figured out the exposure settings on my camera so that the light so that it's a little bit lighter for you guys now I had a look at the footage that I took um, you know last time I filmed this the previous part of this and it looks pretty dark so I do apologize about that part um, but hopefully it will be a little bit better now I really hope that I'm not gonna mess this one up completely because Everything that I tried to do this week ended up turning out sideways. Literally every single project. If you saw the last video that I posted, not many people watched it, but if you saw the last video that I posted with the pumpkin, that was... Um, I had I had such good intentions for it, but it just didn't happen. <laughs> it is what it is, but I really hope that by making that pumpkin and just releasing it out into the world. I have kind of released the the issue that I had <laughs> with not being able to create anything decent this week. Right, so I've painted this side of the book. So while I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm going to mix up some pink. Set this to the side. So again, I'm going to take some white. The reason why I'm using this white paint um, as a base is because it has a better coverage. It's quite opaque. So I find that some of Little Birdie Craft paint can be a little bit sheer. So this helps with it. Um, although I like Little Birdie Craft's shades of paints, like this pink, for example, is very, very sheer. So I like to mix it in with with some more opaque white. So I'm going to add some of this pink. This is a uh, French rose. Just going to mix this together. I still have a little bit of blue on this mixing stick, but it's okay. We're mixing an antique paint anyway, so any kind of little bit of extra is usually a bonus. <laughs> I think I'm going to add a little bit of this misty rose, it's a little bit darker. Right, let's add a little bit of this into the mix. Alongside with, I think, a little bit of black this time. Because we have quite a bit of warm tones here, so we'll add black into it to keep it kind of on the cooler side. This will do, I do like this shade that we got. And again, same story, I'm just going to grab a clean brush and paint this book. Okay, I've applied paint to the front covers of both of these now. So I'm going to get my hair dryer out, get them dry and then paint the back and I'll see you when they're all painted. Well, they're both painted and we're going to start with the pink one because um, this one has been dry for longer. So we're going to start with 
um, this one and then once we're happy with the way that it's looking we're going to move on to the blue one. So now we're going to decorate the rest of the book and we're going to do the decoupage like as one of the last things. So we're going to do all of the aging and everything now and then We'll take care of the equipage later. We're going to do something different for the blue one, but for this one I thought we could do some dry brushing from the edges and the corners and dry brushing over here, you know, just uh, make it kind of drippy looking if that makes sense. Um, anyways, hopefully you'll see what I mean when we get started. So I think we'll use white paint first. And then once we've done the white, we'll go over the edges with some dark wax just to, you know, age them up a little bit. So again, I need to get some paint out. And then I'll take a natural bristle brush. I'm going to use this bigger one because it covers a bit more of an area. And so I pick up a little bit of paint and then dab the excess off on the rest of my plate. And I drag the paint, need a little bit more. Apply the paint using this kind of brushing motion from corners towards the center of the book, like so. I'm trying not to go over these parts too much because we did not cover all of these letters here, you know, that had the dip in. So I'm trying not to go over them too much so that I don't accentuate them too much. As you can see, we have a little bit of a crack here you will see on the blue one we have quite a bit of crack in that's why we're going to do something a little bit different on the blue book to you know mask the cracks a little bit more i'm not sure why there's that many cracks i mean on this one it could be explained by um the use of the hair dryer but on the other one there's quite a lot of cracks so the only thing that i can think of is that is that the blue paint had quite a bit more of um, daily art acrylic paint mixed into it so maybe the two paints don't agree um as well so that's why there's more cracking but you know the only way for me to confirm that would be to kind of try and do the same experiment but with like different colors or something like that and i'm not really in the mood for that right now. So I'm kind of focusing on the edges and the corners, applying more paint on the edges and the corners and then kind of leaving the center as much as I can. I think this will do for this side. Now we're gonna do the spine, which as you can see, you know, the fact that the primer kind of came away in places and it didn't really came out all nice and even you don't even see it now as much it's not really visible especially um, paired together with ripping corners of the book it's it kind of ties it in together nicely all right let's have a little close-up so this is where we are with the pink book at the moment the spine and the back. Now that this is done, we can get dark wax out. I usually use my Liberans special effects wax, but it is black in color and I don't want black right now. So what I have here is this chalk finish furniture wax, it's called dark wax. Um, it's just brown wax on the inside. Um, I don't particularly like this one. Um, it doesn't smell very nice. And also, I don't particularly like the colour, but I don't want anything too harsh and contrasty on this book, so I'm going to attempt to use this wax this time. So we'll see how this goes. I, I literally um, have not used this wax on a project before, so um, it's an experiment. <laughs> As you can see, that is the colour on the inside. This is from um, QD by the way, but I believe you can get this from Poundland as well here in UK. It costs like two or three pounds. So to apply the wax, I'm once again going to use a cloth. Uh, so I'm just going to chop a bit of it off because I don't know, I don't need that big of a piece. And then I'm going to wrap this cloth around my finger. Oh, come on. <laughs> Uh, this is literally my least favourite part of applying any kind of wax. And then I'm going to rub my finger in wax. And then, oh gosh, this stinks. And then I'm going to apply it 
over these edges here. This wax is like really, really sheer. See, I need something that's like in between this and the black wax. I keep looking at Rust-Oleum dark wax, but whenever I go into shops where it's usually sold, it's never there. And I should really just order it online, and if I had done it ages ago, I would have already had it. But every time I think about ordering it online, I think to myself, oh, it's okay, I'm gonna go, you know, I'm gonna be near that shop <laughs> soon, so I'll just get it from there instead of, you know, having to pay for um, postage and stuff. I never end up getting it. <laughs> right, so I'm also going to just apply a little bit over these stencils here, just to accentuate them a little bit more. This will do. And now I think actually we'll apply our decoupage picture onto here. And then once we're all kind of finished with this book, we'll move on to the other one. So I've got my paper here and I'm going to cut out the picture. This is a printout done on a laser printer by the way. So I went to my local print shop and I got it printed out on a laser printer. If you don't have access to a laser printer but you have access to an inkjet printer, you could use photo paper instead if you um, want more information on that well any of my tutorials from like a month or two ago where I used printed out pictures I used photo paper but also I have a separate tutorial all about using photo paper if you're interested just type in my name dainty gift into YouTube and then um, how to use photo paper for decoupage and it will come up so I'm just cutting the image. So this time we're not using moulds or anything um, to mask the edges. I don't even know if we will mask the edges because sometimes it's okay to just leave a picture, you know. <laughs> a picture can exist by itself as well. It, um, not every edge needs to be masked, but I do think actually, you know, after looking at this picture, the way that it looks together with the rest of this, I think we might go over this with a little bit of black wax, the wax that I talked about earlier. This one, ow, <laughs> my elbow. This one, um, Liberon black wax, uh, because this picture, you know, has a black B and everything, so it, Maybe black won't look as bad on it as I imagined. It's always different when you look at a picture, um, you know, when it's still a part of, kind of this kind of collage to when you actually cut it out and press it against your project. All right, so let's sort out these edges. So this is how I work, literally. Um, that's how the process happens. I get an idea, I do it, and then I try something else, and then I get an idea, to, and I think, oh, what if we did that, and what if we did that instead, and so on. So, I, <laughs> even if I do have a plan in my head, I go with the flow. I don't kind of force myself to stick to the plan. And sometimes it works out for the better, and sometimes it doesn't. Right, so we're going to have to be careful with this. Because we don't want to apply too much. But yeah, just if we do... I'm going to try and... I'm going to have to... Oh god, this thing! <laughs> See, I really need to like invest in some kind of sponge blenders or something for this. I'm going to try and be very light-handed with this, which is usually a very difficult thing for me to do because I am a naturally heavy-handed person. Once I start doing something, I just kind of want to go all the way. So I'm trying very hard right now to keep my touch as light as I can possibly have it. That's actually quite nice. Yeah, I like it. And we'll also add a little bit of black over the stencil in. But just a little bit, remember? Just a little bit.
right, so here we are yet again, and let's see how it looks. I think that that looks much better now, so these black edges and black writing and black picture actually has something to uh, bounce off of. So now we can go ahead and decoupage it on. So first I'm going to wet it with a little bit of water, so I just have to spray a bottle and I just spray some water onto it and then I take another cloth and dab the water off of it straight away so because this is a laser printout the paper is really thin as is so you don't need to like soak it for ages or anything I'm literally just soaking it so that when I go to apply it there's like less chance of it expanding and then bubbling up or doing anything crazy like that and to glue this thing on I'm gonna use Mod Podge today um, I would otherwise use my PVA glue or decoupage glue but today I fancy using Mod Podge because I literally just have a tiny little bit left and I want to use it up so that I can just move on already <laughs> so first I'm going to apply some Mod Podge here where I'm gonna want my picture to go and then I pick up the picture pop it on and I just start dabbing at it with my cloth to make sure there's no air bubbles in there and to make sure that it's all kind of stuck down really well there we are and now I'm gonna apply another coat of Mod Podge over the top and that's going to seal it all in. There we are, so I've applied the image and now I'm going to let it dry. While it's drying we're going to move on to the blue book and sort out the blue one out. Okay, so I've got the blue book here. As you can see a lot of cracking, way more cracking, and I genuinely suspect that it's probably due to the fact that I, I added a lot more of the daily art paint into this, so no matter how many times I went over this, it just keeps cracking. So to mask it all, I think I'm going to apply this diamond stencil over it, and so I'm choosing diamond because, you know, on these papers we also have some diamond ones so they kind of go well together they echo each other and you know who doesn't like diamond so as you can see my stencil is smaller than the book itself so I'm gonna have to do it in two goes I'm gonna do it on the front and the back so I've got this leftover white paint here I'm gonna put a little bit more on here and I don't want this to be all like super, super white. So I'm going to just pick up a little bit of this blue paint and mix it in with this white. So creating a similar toned paint, but like much, much lighter. So I straighten it. So I kind of line it up with the book covers. I'm going to grab my stencil brush, this is literally just a natural bristle brush with a flat end and again I pick up some paint and I dab the excess off because we don't want paint to be blotchy and I'm going to go like this and dab on the stencil I'm not going to try and get it all like super crisp whatever comes out, comes out <laughs> So the paint is still going to crack in the places where there's cracks already. So that's just what happens. One way that I thought we could um, combat that is by now applying some varnish over this to seal whatever is inside. And then maybe applying another few coats of paint over it. You know, the same blue paint. That should technically resolve the issue, but to be perfectly honest, I just can't be bothered to do that, that's <laughs> why we're not doing it. <laughs> but one of these days, maybe I'll try it. Or maybe you can try it and let me know if it works or not. Let's see what's going on here. Very nice, so now I'm going to line these up. I'm doing kind of a couple of rows here to make sure that they're all, you know, kind of straight-ish. <laughs> 
and again go over the rest of it. So as you can see now, hopefully you can see at least um, to me, first thing that I see are the diamonds and then you know if you look at it a little bit closer then you can see the cracks underneath so it's already not as visible now imagine that we're also going to stick our decoupage picture here over the top and that's going to cover most of it up and then you won't even know that it was there so this is all dry so I'm just gonna ah Oh no, I just caught this with my nail and I've got some pink peeking through. It's a good job that I kept this paint. So I'm going to patch it up. It's always a good idea to keep that particular mix of paint on hand until you're completely finished with the project. Right, let's do this side now. So again, I'm going to line it up. Right, so here we are, so I've done the front and the back and I'm going to again use the same stencil brush and just dry brush some of this paint onto the spine and the edges, kind of in the same way that we did with the pink book. Show off this beautiful stencil and fade these edges a little bit more too. Touch wood, but it's so funny how this whole week I have not been able to create anything uh, kind of cohesive. <laughs> um, everything that I started making or, 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 you know, doing whatever, I just wanted to put it in a bit like straight away. <laughs> and then, so I started doing that pumpkin because I had this amazing idea, which again, I'm referring back to my last video. I started working on that pumpkin and I had an amazing idea of like making it look all kind of Mackenzie inspired and everything and then um, I picked out the wrong colours and everything just kind of went sideways from there but I thought to myself I've got to finish it I've got to see it through and then as soon as I saw it through the second I posted the video and I you know did it all um, it just kind of it's almost like a curse was lifted <laughs> I felt at ease and I actually felt like that creative flow coming back. So here's my little piece of advice for today, for today's Create With Me, a little piece of philosophy. We need a jingle for this part, maybe we can make this a reoccurring segment. <laughs> but yeah, my little piece of advice for this kind of thing is if you get stuck and you feel like you're out of the creative flow and you don't feel it and everything that you seem to try and start just turns out wrong just take one piece and sacrifice it <laughs> make it your turd if you will <laughs> that's how I uh, lovingly refer to my pumpkin I mean it's not completely awful but it's not amazing it's not the best piece of work that I've ever created far from it um, Sometimes you have to make a sacrifice, you know, for them gods of creativity. <laughs> sacrifice a piece, see it through, see it till the end, create that piece, get it out of your system, get let all of that poo poo come out. And I can almost guarantee you that it will help. Um, this definitely comes true time and time again for me personally. Um, every time I get stuck in this rut or out of this creative flow, and I, I'm always very reluctant to do it because I don't want to believe that it's true and I actually do have to waste my time on creating something awful, <laughs> not great looking, but it is very true. Oh, <laughs> it does definitely work every single time. You just have to get that turd out of your system. Hashtag get the turd out. <laughs> Let's get that trending on Instagram.
Right, okay, so there you go. I actually feel like I'm starting to like this book better than the other one. <laughs> I really like the way that the diamond pattern and the, um, and this, you know, faded edges look together. Let's hope I don't mess it up now. Right, um, I don't know, should we do the black wax as well on this one? I almost wish that I could just pull you guys right now. Should I add some black wax onto the edges or not? I need your wisdom, I need your advice right now, but obviously you're going to see this in the future. So, uh, you know, I need, I need you guys. <laughs> Let's see how they look together. Ah, beautiful, isn't it? Look at these colours. Um, now, should we do the black? I think we should do the black because the blue one is also going to have that black edge and black writing. So let's just kind of make them matchy matchy. If you can hear strange sounds, it's because my cat is angry scratching at his scratching post. It's been so weird lately. He's such a strange cat. He always likes to sleep in our bedroom, and my partner usually goes to bed before me, and we don't allow cats in the bedroom, you know, when we're asleep. So he gets him out of the bedroom and closes the door. And my cat, Pepper, always gets so peed off about it. <laughs> he always comes steaming into the living room, which is where I sit, and, um, you know, like, almost kicks the door <laughs> open. It literally, like, swings open all the way. And then, you know, he'll come and sit on my legs angrily or... Um, start like chewing on the corner of my desk or something to show me that he's very annoyed right now. He's a very special boy. Oh yes, I definitely like this. Dark edges just give it a little bit of, um, I don't know, mystery, that proper used look. Just need to get some dark wax but like dark brown rather than black because black is good but sometimes it's just a little bit too harsh, you know? Okay, once again, so my camera, I think, overheated and shut off, so I had to turn it off for a little bit. And I took the liberty of um, applying, you know, this decoupage picture onto this book. I mean, you saw me apply this one, so exactly the same process. And now they are both, well, this one is almost dry. I can touch them, they're just a little bit kind of damp-ish. I think I'm actually going to add little borders here around the edges of our decoupage pictures just to, I don't know, I can never leave the decoupage pictures as they are, even though, you know, there's nothing wrong with there being a picture glued onto a book, technically. Um, I don't know, I just like the idea of there being a border and so I'm going to, ah, uh, smashing the light up. So I'm just going to use my liquid pearls. So I just bought these in my local pound land. Uh, the Dovecraft 3D Pearl Defect. This is in pastel cream colour. And I essentially use them in the exact same way as you would use contour liner. Um, except that this one cost me £1 and then uh, Pebeo contour liner costs £4. So I make a little ball and then I drag it along, make a little ball, drag it along make a little ball and so on and I think that this color actually brings it all together really nicely so I don't even need to do anything else to it there you go so this is one picture framed now let's do the other one This stencil is asking for something a little bit more. It just kind of, it, it doesn't look very defined. I think I probably shouldn't have gone over this with black wax. So, I don't know. Should I bring back the white colour a little bit? 
I think. Let's try this. If not, we can... If this doesn't work, we can always cover this with white paint. So I'm going to take some of this metallic wax. This is by Finaba in Sweet Rose. And, and it's basically this beautiful pink colour. So I'm just going to pick some up with my finger. See how that looks. Mm, in the right light it looks nice, but in the wrong angle it just looks dirty. Right, okay, I'm not going to do that. Right, let's use some... Let's just lighten it up. So, I'm going to take some white paint. This brush has some yellow paint from my pumpkin project because I started using it and then instead of putting it into water I just stuck it back into my brush holder so now it's a little bit crusty it's okay though I'm sure it will I'm sure it will live I think this is going to be as good as it can get. So I think we're finished. Let me show you some close-ups. So this is our pink book. Obviously all of this is still wet, so I need to wait for it to dry. This is our pink book, looking beautiful as always. So this is the spine on the back. And this is the blue one, and I think that the blue one just turned out really, really cute and cool. and just I don't know I like it <laughs> I like it a lot this is the back and when my liquid pearls are dry I'm gonna use some of this heavy duty wood varnish by polyvine so this is a dead flat finish I'm going to varnish these the tops so I'm probably just gonna do one coat you know just to kind of protect the paint a little bit so since these are not actual notebooks I'm only going to use them kind of for photo props or you know just to use them as a display um, item they don't really need much protection but of course if it was an actual notebook that I was going to use I would definitely uh, apply at least three coats of varnish over the top of this just to keep the paint safe from any chipping etc especially um, you know, because notebooks usually tend to sit in bags and get thrown around and all sorts. So you want to keep your book safe. Um, yeah, and I think we are finished. I'm going to throw in some like close-ups and videos um, here at the end. <laughs> and I hope that you like the look of them. And I hope that this may have inspired you to go and remodel some of your books. My question of the day for you is which one do you like better, pink or blue? Um, I am definitely team blue, although I do really like the shade of pink that we ended up with. I just think that I probably should have done some kind of patent stencil on it as well, but then, you know, I wanted to, the reason why I did these two boxes is because I wanted to show you kind of two different ways of doing it. There they are, they look like a matching set, although, you know, each one has its own features and each one is beautiful in its own right. I hope that this video was enjoyable for you to watch, I hope that you had fun and until next time, I hope that you all are having a fantastic day. I am sending lots of love from my house to yours and I will see you next time. Bye!